Super funky. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Taking this jam all week long. I like it. Yeah, we're going to do the song of the week. And again, this song is Glitter by Keys and Crates. Ooh. Mm. Canadian talent. Right? On a rainy day on for, a, your, <laughs> for your ass. Interesting storm day. <laughs> uh, did you air quote storm day? Very interesting. Because everything has been canceled. The city has been canceled. Society in Halifax has been canceled. <laughs> Except for us, because we're here, Facebook and Instagram. Thank you for tuning in. We do this Monday to Friday, 4.30 to 5 o'clock. Screw a storm, man. Screw it. Yep. Bend it over, right over the table. Well, let's not get graphic. Man. Well, you sometimes have to. Let's do it then. We're going to go all, all the right. way. All right, so we're going to spread the <laughs> Jesus. No, that's the wrong move here. Sorry, sorry. It's the right move sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> you got to be careful because the kids are home now. This is true. This is right? true. They're home every day, but today they didn't go anywhere. Apologies. Because school was canceled. Right? I was just saying to you earlier, uh, I think this might be the first school cancellation with rain. Yeah, I don't remember any cancellations ever being a, a, a rain day cancellation. Uh, and even actually canceled before rain even happened. Yeah, because um, yeah. apparently the uh, HRM website was down earlier today. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah, a couple <laughs> things were down. Of course it was. I don't get it, dude. God forbid, you know, your power goes out when it doesn't have to and internet I, is just gone. I don't get it. The school boards have to make uh, make the call because I got two kids. They got to make the judgment by uh, 6 a.m. That's this the is cutoff. For sure. So they got to anticipate whether, you know, uh, the weather's going to be bad enough later. Yeah. And to avoid the whole mess of parents leaving work to go pick up their kids if they have to cancel it. Uh, and on top of that, what if the schools lose power? Yeah. I think that was the biggest fear, that they were going to lose power midday. Heaven forbid people read books in the dark. <laughs> yeah. I could Get still, a couple I, flashlights up. Right? It's not that dark during the day. It was not that dark today where you could open windows and still nah, do the still, lesson. Okay, yeah. I don't, I don't, it doesn't take power to write down uh, answers on paper, to write little stories. Kids are pansies. You know how it is. Well, no, it's a school. It's a whole thing. You can't win because one way you go one way and you go the other way, parents are going to be pissed off either way. This is true. They'll be like, ah, shit, you kept school today. It's supposed to be a crazy storm. Like, How do you feel about the whole situation? Well, it's different for me because I got some flexibility. Like, My yeah. kids are old enough they can stay home. Okay. Right? Or they can go somewhere. I have enough people around where they could go to their house. Right. You know, parents don't have that luxury. Not all parents do. So, unfortunately, I get it. And me, I have flexibility with my job. Yeah. Worst case, if I really had to be home with them, I could. Yeah. Right? Except for here. And I drag them here with me. <laughs> but um, that that day has not happened. Right. But yeah, but for me, it's flexible. It's a different situation. Okay. But some other parents, they don't have that flexibility. They got to go to work and regardless. That's, right. And that's where the big argument comes. Yeah. Understandably, too. But yeah, then there's it. another argument where a lo some parents use school kind of as a, a babysitting service. From Brazil. What up? Nice. What up from Brazil? Now, here's my beef. My beef is not even, uh, it's not so much the school thing. Mm. It's the friggin' fear mongering. Dude. That's put in by the media, not us. We went through this yesterday. And it was so evident. And they just scared the hell out of everybody. You posted up yesterday a picture at Sobeys. Yeah, yeah. And shelves were <laughs> were bare. bananas avocados your the celery hell? all the boring vegetables and produce were taken i don't get it dude i don't know it was literally like the world was ending today dude why how did i was saying this earlier to jasmine how did bananas become the superfood of of storms like i gotta have bananas i thought it was storm chips yeah, and, it wasn't the hashtag storm chips not right? hashtag storm banana yeah <laughs> right no man what the hell i don't get it People toughen up. Grow I a set. I don't know. Yeah, it, it's again. Yeah, we were, we were saying yesterday. It's just the fear of like big storm coming. Like that being said, yeah. um, I'm an NHL fan, so the Boston Bruins game has been postponed down down in uh, Boston or whatever because I guess they're getting some crazy weather. No, yeah. But I mean, like you said, um, for the school board to kind of they have to make the decision by six o'clock. Nothing was happening. I don't think by six o'clock. Like if it was going to be a snow day, it usually the snow has to start like the night before, like ten, eleven, and like keep pounding it. But there was nothing, and I just remember pe people like waking up saying they just had no power. This morning. This morning, and right. I'm like, why? Why is there no power? It's not even snowing out. 
he and here's the weird thing too um from what I heard, someone who was talking to somebody in Nova Scotia Power at the gym today was telling me about this, that which is makes actually it's not even a good excuse. They said when there, Nova Scotia Power, somebody from Nova Scotia Power said that when there's a transition in the temperature from cold oh, to Jesus. warmer, all of a sudden that screws with the um, the trans uh, the transformers right. enough to shut them down. Oh if anybody God. out there is from Nova Scotia uh, Power, please chime in on this so I don't think you're all a bunch of idiots. Oh I don't get it. I, we, we need to interview somebody from Nova Scotia Power. Yeah, and I'm not blaming the people that work for Nova Scotia Power. I'm just, Nova Scotia Power just for me is like, I just don't what? get it. I just don't get it. There's a couple questions that I would like to ask an expert before. Yes. I mean, I have a couple, uh, yeah, like a lots of questions to ask because, yeah, I would like to know the answers to. I don't get it. I don't yeah. get it. I don't understand it. Like Nova Scotia Power is is a multi billion dollar company. I'm I'm assuming. Yeah. Keep the lights on, man. Is it that uh, hard? And that says Pete's has bananas last night. Pete's fatigue. Okay. So if you want your bananas, people go to Pete's fatigue. There you go. Shouts out to Pete. We got the the hot source. Yeah, we got the inside scoop from right? Annette. <laughs> Shouts out. So anyway, um, uh, be safe. Yeah. But most importantly, be safe, everybody. Be safe, everybody. So, without further ado, let's get into the show and the topics we're going to talk about. Yeah. First of all, we're going to talk about this uh, gentleman who froze to death after a hit and run. Interesting story. That's got to hurt. I'd say. Uh, up next, how would you feel if you and a friend decided to split a lottery ticket and one of your, your friend wins but doesn't split it with you? Ooh my worst nightmare right <laughs> but not your worst nightmare a naked gym is now in new york city not my worst nightmare <laughs> or is it and finally as we sip our espressos tim hortons in ontario I believe yes. is going to be cutting its benefits due to the wage war currently yeah. happening in canada terrible story unbelievable almost yeah disappointing yeah very disappointing yeah so up first Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about this interesting gentleman here. Um, <laughs> this who looks none too pleased in this photo. No. Oh, sorry, my bad. It's all right. I got to fix my thing here. No, it's it. That's you're oh. good. You're good, sir. All right. So a Milwaukee man. Yes. Uh, ran from an accident scene. Mm -hmm. He hid in the bushes, and unfortunately ended up freezing to death. Oh. According to a report uh, released Wednesday by the Milwaukee County Medical Examiner's Office, Mark Henderson, 34, blew a red light on December 30th, causing a four-car crash. Henderson ran from the scene and hid in the bushes from police. Oh. His body, which was very odd, was found the next day by his girlfriend and a homeowner instead of the cops. I found that really odd. That's a little weird. The medical examiner report said Henderson was uh, laying down in between a shed and the wooden fence. Uh, Henderson was on parole for pleading guilty in 2012 for a fatal hit and run that he did. <laughs> Jesus. So I have a couple questions. Yeah. Um, what was this dude doing behind the, the wheel in the first place after he had pleaded guilty? Yeah. Yeah, why are in you in 2012 for a hit and run? Yeah, why are you driving, bro? Why is he driving in the first place? <laughs> yeah, that's number one. Um, hit and run seems to be this guy's hobby at this point. And finally, did karma finally catch up to this guy? Well, that's a pretty big price to pay. Was a hit and run cause death? Yeah, in the 2012 one. Oh boy, Anderson was on parole for pleading guilty in a 2012 fatal hit and run. Okay, so he did cause death, and this is a case of karma. This then, is isn't it? literally the perfect, well, not the perfect, but well, the dictionary terms of karma. Yeah. Uh, yeah, those questions are, are legitimate. Yeah, why, number one, are you behind the wheel, man? I don't get people why they continue to do these things. I mean, you, you were, you were, was he, con he was convicted of the hit and run causing death, yes? He was on parole. He was on parole for that, and yeah. here he is behind the wheel, obviously a bad driver. Clearly, we don't know the situation behind it, but I think this is a good case of karma, man. This is like you know he took someone's life, yeah, and in the same and karma. Not same thing, but kind of similar situation. Almost pretty. Well, he just he did a hit and run. Yeah, yeah. He hit he hit a car and it caused a four car pile up. True, and he and he peaced out. He decided to hide in some bushes until he froze to death. Didn't work out for him. Why no. is um? So oh, I gotta knock up some wood. I'm sorry. I should be laughing. Yeah, it's not, it's, you shouldn't be laughing at something like that. But no, anyway. But it's an interesting story. It is very interesting. Here's the thing. Mm. Man, what a way to go. How do you freeze to death? That's what I don't understand. There's so many questions I want to Don't you realize, ask. like, I'm cold. 
Maybe I should go somewhere. I might die out here. Maybe right? I should get my ass up off the ground. He didn't want to get caught that badly. No, yeah, I guess not. But then what do you do? I don't what do you just fall asleep and then you're just you're frozen? <laughs> I don't get it. Like if it, I get to the point where I'm super cold, I'm like, fuck shit, I'm getting up. Yeah. I'm like police, take me in. It's me. I did it. Yeah. And what kind of time? I mean, they couldn't have been looking for him that long. Were they really looking for him? I don't that get long? how the girlfriend found him first before the police did. <laughs> yeah, she's pretty good. How did she find him and those guys couldn't find him? I don't know, man. Oh, that's so weird. This is man. delicious espresso, by the way. It worked. Shouts out to George Clooney. Yes, thank and you, George. I'm going on about this espresso machine that I bought on Amazon, and it's been. Yeah! I've been making espresso. Okay, for, I'm making espresso <laughs> for everybody. Like, I feel pumped. Yeah, he, he jacked now. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I don't know. I think this is a, a, a lack of, of of a little bit of intelligence. If you're outside, you're running from the cops. Okay, I get it. You don't want to be caught. This happened to you before. It's like, oh shit. You could kind of keep. You would think he would keep moving, but like. Quietly, secretly, like okay, the cops how are long, like. How long does it take you to freeze to death? Depends on what you're wearing. Depends on the temperature. Okay, but like I'd say I don't know. It's got to be a couple hours, right? And it's not like he fell in a lake somewhere. Where no, that, no, it's yeah. a couple minutes, a couple seconds. That's what I'm saying. So don't you realize after maybe like 45 minutes, like I probably should get up out right. of this cold. Once the once the the penis goes inside the body. Yeah. <laughs> once it's like a scared turtle. Yeah. Yeah, you might want to get your cold ass off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard the sound before, and I will assume that's the way. It's anyway, going. that's uh, uh, I don't know. Poor guy. It's never, it's never a good thing, obviously. But um, a little karma and a little bit of stupidity, maybe. Yes. You know, mm. don't run from the cops, people. No, it's usually not a good thing to do that. No. I don't think if I've heard in any case where that's uh, worked out well for anybody. It's never worked out well, man. Running from the police, it never seems to work. No. You know what I mean? Like, either you're going to get caught, yeah. or you're going to freeze to death. Right. And your penis go, does that, whatever. He <laughs> either way, you don't want any of that to happen. No, exactly. No, yeah. you especially, don't want any of that. Especially the penis part. That's, that's weird. almost worse than death. Yeah. Anyway. Ooh. A poor guy. Oh, man. Yeah, I feel bad for him. Yeah. No, I don't. No, you don't. You don't Actually, don't. Yeah. No. Fuck him. Fuck. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, sorry. Jeez. <laughs> the, 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 no more espresso up. for you. Yeah, yeah. Delicious. Uh, up next. Mm. This, these two best of friends. Yes. Pictured here. An Arkansas waitress claimed her co owner ran off with half of her $300,000 winnings from a scratch off ticket. The oh. waitresses were given the scratch off tickets from their boss on Friday as a gift, but told employees whatever they won would have to be split as a Christmas bonus. Leslie Underwood and Mandy Van Houten split their pile of tickets, and one turned out to be very lucky. Mm. Van Houten won $300,000 on a Fortune Instant ticket. The women were to receive $150,000 since they worked the same shift and they were going to split their $300,000. Mm. Uh, Underwood said she and Van Houten discussed what they would do with the winnings, but uh, the talks were demolished once the waitress saw her co owner had cashed the ticket without her on Wednesday. Ooh. Underwood was planning to take her children on a trip for the money. Well, sorry, with the money. Mm. Um, to add further insult to injury, um, Underwood said that she felt like they were best friends. Oh. Uh, and for two decades, for like 20 years, these guys were like best friends. Wow. Uh, she even helped her get the job, put in the good work. Oh, my. God. Stuck her neck out for her. And even helped her like take her to work uh by driving her so she wouldn't have to go back and forth because wow. she yeah wow so she said quote unquote i think that's what hurt me the most is as much as i done uh she could have done right for once <sighs> so then houghton houghton uh has failed to appear at work this week clearly <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> and is not answering the phone surprise um underwood says she plans on taking legal action um as she did not receive her fair share however Van Houten was the only person to sign the back of the ticket. So I don't know if she's SOL at this point. Uh, well, legally, I guess if she's the only one who signed, it would be hers. But if they have an agreement. I know. the. I guess like because like the I don't know how that would work. I always say that when I give as a joke, joke kind of serious. 
Because yeah. I definitely give, I give uh, for birthdays, I give like a scratch and win. And yeah, I'm just yeah. like, whatever you win, well, just give me 50%. Give me half, right? Please. Just like, you know, like right, as right. if they're yeah. going to win the million dollars or $300,000. Yeah. You say it for a technicality just in case just, they do it. Right. <laughs> Remember so, what I told you? Remember I said give me half? Exactly. I so, wasn't joking. I, know, I wasn't joking. Uh, so, yeah, in this case, um, yeah, it happened. And uh, his friend uh, just kind of peaced out. You know, this is a weird situation, man, especially with everything that's behind it. They're, they're friends for 20 years. Uh, she helped her get the job. She drives her to work. Like, there's just so many, like, things that she's done for her. And this just seems like... My thing is, if you got a ticket like this, who holds on to it? Oh. That's the tricky part right here. It's kind of like that episode of The Simpsons where uh, they had, like, the number one... Uh issue of radioactive man and um i watched that yesterday oh yeah i watched it yesterday <laughs> and they didn't know who could take it because yeah. like, it was split between three exactly. friends and they're and what like do they all do? they're all shacked up together because right? no one trusted each other exactly i think she probably she probably uh uh underestimated her friend probably just said listen I, you know is that her there oh jeez uh it's going to be uh it's going to be you know uh honest and say listen if we win we're going to do what we said which was split it Hundred fifty thousand is good yeah, right. Three hundred thousand. I mean, down there they gotta pay taxes on it and stuff. I guess, but just as a friend standpoint, if we listen, split if on wants- a ticket, Tony, I'd be like, let's go to the bank. I wouldn't duck you. You'd be gone. <laughs> yeah, actually, Tika hasn't answered his phone in weeks. Where is he at? Yeah, he seems We're like he's doing talking trends. Yeah, talk, he's doing talking trends in Vegas yeah. all of a sudden. So what just happened there? Uh, but there is an update to the story. Oh, good. So the story kind of went viral. Yep. And an anonymous man in California decided he wanted to help Underwood out by giving her a special gift. But don't worry, what it's a good gift, gift, guys. It's a good <laughs> gift. Uh, the man, a former Disney employee for 30 years, decided to give Underwood an all-expenses-paid trip to Disneyland for her and her family, including a VIP experience like a private tour of the castle, Ooh. one-on-one encounters with the characters, and princess makeovers for her daughter. Quote-unquote saying, the guy said... Living without giving is not living. Boom. Who is this guy? He wants to remain anonymous. Wow. He's the dude. He is the man right she now. She was planning on taking her, her, her family on the trip. That was, they discussed plans, what they would okay. do with the money. And she's All like, right. I'm going to take my family to Disney, Disneyland or Disney World. Yeah. And the happiest place on earth. That's a stand-up thing to do right there. Right? That's a stand-up thing to do. I would think if Disney uh, got a hold of this story, they would... Uh, Give this guy maybe a refund for, let, let alone working for Disney for thirty years, and maybe why don't they pony up? Yeah, step up, step up, Disney, step your game up, Disney. Right, but I mean, I do like this. Like, and uh, if that's the guy's mantra and how he lives life, by if you're not uh, giving, you're not living. That's perfectly fine. I mean, maybe he has enough to give, and uh, you know, I can't say if I had enough to give, I'd probably be doing oh, I'd be, wild things like that. You know I, what I mean? Like me too. I would definitely be doing stuff like that. So good on him for doing that. It kind of sucks that that. I mean, it sucks that she got a trip out of it only, and she doesn't have any of the other money. But right. At least she got something out of it. You yeah, know, it's true. And uh, I mean, her friend now is you. She's disappeared. She- let yeah. her show her face again and Ooh. see what happens to you. All right. Don't be doing it. Hopefully, there's another update. Hopefully, her friend uh, Mandy. I think Mandy's the one on the the right here. Okay. So I'm just gonna she's walk, the one who claimed it. Face yeah. Out. yeah. She's the one who claimed it. So she looks like the one. Who yeah, looks, she would. She's got that look in her yeah, eye. Yeah. Damn you, Mandy. Yeah. Damn you, Mandy. Um. Yeah. So hopefully there's another update. Maybe Mandy comes to her senses. Maybe she spends mm. a little bit money and then she's like, you know what? I really did dog my friend out. Yeah. Well. Hopefully. I'll bank on that. I don't know. I'm. Um, hopefully karma catches opt- up with people optimism. like Optimism. A little optimism, don't that's when karma comes into play, man. This is true. We just had a story about karma, so yeah, yeah well, watch out because this one she may be freezing out between two sheds. And- <laughs> oh, geez, it took a dark turn. Yeah, get dark on it, baby. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that sucks. That really sucks. Up next, uh, you want to talk about this, uh, this interesting gym membership down in New York City? We should talk about this because uh, nudity maybe all it's cracked up to be. Oh, god. <laughs> All right, so this is uh, just for you guys. It's not coming here that we know of yet. Uh, A gym in New York City is now offering the naked workout. Uh, So basically... uh, Isn't that just called sex? (laughs) Well, back in the day. Yeah, I suppose it is. Actually, yeah, if you guys want to do a naked workout, that's probably the best thing. (laughs) Uh, But anyway, starting the new year, they just kicked it off, of course, uh, Mm -hmm. and they want you to be... uh, 
you know, inspired by your New Year's resolutions mm -hmm. uh, by introducing the new Animal Workout, oh God. which basically are workout classes that they have. They can be, um, uh, they have male classes, they have a one for women, uh, they also have co-ed <laughs> classes and private sessions mm -hmm. uh, geared towards couples. Uh, so <laughs> these classes, uh, quote unquote, they, uh, the class is designed to be a total body workout yeah, uh, <laughs> that uses your body weight as resistance uh, to work the glutes, butt, and leg. It's interesting how it's only those things that's working uh, in this nude class, making you making you look and feel good naked. Mm -hmm. So I guess the whole thing is people that don't like the way they look naked in the mirror. This would be a way to make you feel even worse because working out naked just doesn't seem very appealing. Um, yeah. So anyway, it's gonna be. Uh, you have an option though. Um, if you're not comfortable being completely nude, um, but still want to try to reach your fitness goals among these classes, uh, the gym notes to, uh, notes to everyone that the option of wearing uh, a nude underwear, <laughs> if desired. What's nude underwear? I'm assuming it would match your skin tone. Is that the beige? I think okay. yeah. All right. Listen, if you're in it, you better be in it. Oh, don't yeah, come in with no underwear. Exactly. If I'm going all the way, you're going all the right, way. Right. We're like, going in, on. showing. Uh, they also said, uh, as a forward think as a forward thinking fitness center, we like to make sure we offer our members the very latest in fitness development. Yeah. This is the latest, I guess, that it is. Oh. Our approach is to make sure our members get <laughs> and stay in the absolute best shape. And our new naked uh, personnel fitness sessions are no exception. Uh, <laughs> this new development brings with it a range of fitness and health benefits, and allows our members to have a little cheeky. Fun oh, God. in the process. I guess it's supposed to be good because your body, like your pores and stuff. Tony, apparently, that's the word. This is the. I'm not going to say this is the dumbest thing I've heard in 2018. Does it sound a little scammy to you? This is not scammy. All right. But the, even that, as you're describing that, it's yes. just like, oh, this is. It's so good for you. It's just like you know, it's also good for you. Right. You can keep your clothes on and still work out. Oh, you want to sweat a little bit more? Why don't you go to the sauna after the gym? Yeah. You'll still sweat. You're still sweating. Your sweat is not different from when you're naked and you're clothed. Well, they claim that uh, introdu uh, in in this includes skin breathing and the release of endorphins due to the vitamin D from sunlight and complete body awareness so you can see if you're cheating on your exercise routines. That's why you sometimes can work out in front of a mirror to check your positions. Or how about get a personal trainer? Yeah. Just They'll be like, tell you if you're cheating. Yeah, be like, uh, your position's wrong. You do it. Your form is all jacked up. Yeah. And if you're married, is this kind of... Yeah, could you imagine, like... If you if you go and you're not with your partner when you do it and you just go and it's you're like TK, how was your day? It's like oh, day was good, babe. Went to work. Oh yeah, well, you seem to be like two hours uh, <laughs> later. I've just been going to the gym. Yeah, hitting it hard. Hitting it hard, doing that private session. Yeah, getting that <laughs> private action on. Yeah, that's a good question. What? Yeah, is it, is it? I mean, is it? Can the, <sighs> how do you do that as a couple? Can you do? I mean, I'm sure. Well, as a couple, if it's if it's a private session, all right, cool. It's like a whatever. But if you go there on your own, if I'm just I'm married, if I go to a class that's full of women and I'm having a naked workout, your spouse may not be too happy with your new uh, yeah, lifestyle. You're only allowed to go in the male class, Tony. Yeah, and listen, who's going to be in the male class anyway? Yeah, right. I mean, dudes dudes go to the gym a lot of times to look at women. Right. They're not going to go there. Well, some men will. I won't say you. But um, it's, uh, yeah. And that's anyway. the thing. And then it kind of poses the question, like, will they have classes for... Lesbian couples, gay couples, I, normal, I it, like, uh, heterosexual couples. I think you're probably going too far if you start going down that road. Well, I think it's just too many options. But I just think they're kind of, I don't know. I think they should offer, uh, again, maybe the private thing isn't too bad. But I think when you do the group one, that's where it gets a little interesting. Yeah, it's a little tricky. Like, why do you people, like, ah, you got to start questioning, like, why people start going to stuff like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, exactly. Why do you go to nude beaches? Why would somebody go to a nude beach? Okay, well, number one, if you're going to go to a nude beach, maybe you don't want tan lines. You want to tan right. without, I know you don't tan, but yeah. the majority of us who are the palest over skin. Listen, I'm like you're like almost darker than me. I know. It's I, I kind of but I tan. See, that's the difference. Right, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, maybe you don't want the lines on your, on your thing. Uh, on your body. <laughs> on the your other thing. thing is, too, or you, know, you don't want it on your thing. <laughs> your thang, thang, the thang, the thang. <laughs> Uh, but the other side would be if you're a nudist, that's your lifestyle. <laughs> right. So if you're a nudist, that's just normal to you, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, but they're not the first to offer it. There's also uh, another place called Bold and Naked 
hmm. yoga yoga studio in New York that also offers it. So they're not the first one. I don't know about the yoga naked. That looks. That seems like a lot of bending and things. That well, you're I still bending. You're doing squats, lunges, and with, even those, man. Like, do you really want to see people naked doing that kind of thing? Listen, I'm gonna go in hard as oh, a rock. Jesus, here we go. Can't go in with old baby dick. Oh, <laughs> That's all the time we have for today, ladies. Thank you for joining us. We out of here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, but God. no, I, I mean, you got to. <laughs> meep, meep, meep. I'm a baby. I'm a baby. Hello. I'm a baby. So uh, I was talking to people. Right. Um, anyway, how's your work? Okay. So, yeah, that's the, again, yeah. I went to one nude beach. You did? Out of curiosity, I don't. I'm not like, oh yeah, I'm gonna look at some girls and see some, uh, you know. I just want to see what it's about. I did see you go it. naked? No. You did? No, I didn't. You did not. No. So do people look at you weird when you're on the naked beach and you're not naked? I don't think so. Isn't that like a faux pas because they feel like you're just perving? I mean, you could perv naked too. Right. You may be perving more when you're naked, but you're not embracing the whole situation. Yeah, I never thought of it about it that way. Like, yeah, uh, yeah how would I feel if I was totally nude and I saw like fully, right. fully clothed people coming? Like, oh yeah, here they come, honey. I just to I'd look be, at us. I'd be super upset. I'd be like, listen, if it's it's a nude beach. Yeah, take your clothes off. Unless. Hey. Maybe I don't want them to. Hey, you clothed. <laughs> Take your shorts off. I want you to strip for yeah. me. Yeah. Show me that baby dick. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm a baby. I'm a baby. <laughs> I started talking to you like, shut up. I told you not to speak in public. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Uh, anyway, I don't know. It's a thing. If you want to get naked and go to New York and partake in your exercise situation. I just can't see it going without problems. I'm for it. Trust me. I'm down for whatever people want to do. Like with all I don't know if I'll do it. I don't know if I want to work out. I don't know I, if I would want to see myself work out. So naked. obviously this gym, there was, there's no case. This is, this is a gym where all people that commit harassment should go to. Ooh. Because how in the hell can you ever accuse anybody of harassment? I mean, on certain levels, obviously the no touching policy. Right, yeah. Could you met you, what you want to do in this position? Buddy gets right behind you and yeah, just like let, shoves his hips right in you. you. So what you want to do here okay. is, uh, okay. How you like that? A little bit deeper. Just a little deeper. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Just let me show. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> no. Baby dick. Yeah, baby, tur baby dick turned into a man dick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Became pu had puber also. Okay. Why is your voice changing, well, we baby got, dick? We got to get off this. Anyway, but that's the other side. Like, Harassment, like dudes can just go there and gawk and do their thing. Exactly. And they're not going to be like, what are you looking at? Uh, you're naked in front of me. Yeah. I'm going to look at you. Exactly. And I would probably be the guy in the back of the class if I were to choose. Yes. Right? Yeah. I wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Or I'd be in the front of class. I'd just turn around. I'd yeah. just face everybody. Oh, my God. <laughs> look at this. Check it out. Check it out. The baby. I just came out of the pool. Yeah, <laughs> real cool. <laughs> just froze my ass off outside. Oh, baby, hiding from cops. <laughs> Me. Yeah, okay. frozen to death. Yeah. Anyways, uh, <laughs> we digress. <laughs> digress into something <laughs> a little bit more horrendous. Let's move on. Uh, yeah, Tim Hortons. Oh, good old Timmy's are one of our favorite uh, watering holes for coffees and such things. Mm. Uh, is making some enemies. Is uh, is uh, becoming big man bully. Unfortunately, to its uh, to its employees. Uh, anyway, in, in Toronto, uh, they're they're currently in the process of raising uh, the minimum wage, the hourly minimum wage, uh, in in uh, in Toronto. Um, I think it's Toronto or Ontario. Uh, I think it might be in Toronto. So okay. it's going up two dollars and forty cents. So it's basically it's at eleven sixty right. right now. It's going to go up to fourteen dollars an hour. Tim Hortons ain't having it. Mm. So they said, "Yo, you can't be doing that." Or, yeah, you can be doing that, but we're going to cut back your benefits. Oh. So basically what they're going to be doing is cutting back dental health benefits to offset the cost of the hourly jump uh, in wage. And on top of that, they're also saying, no, they're not going to be entitled to any paid breaks. So employees can't have paid breaks anymore. That's all gone. Uh, and that's what's going on. Tim Hortons is saying, listen, we got to offset our costs, and this is how we're going to do it. So basically, if you're an employee of Tim Hortons, I mean, it's bad enough that you're, you're working – minimum wage job just to make ends meet because yeah. only in Toronto I can imagine the cost of living is friggin insane yeah and you're working at Tim Hortons to make ends meet just to make enough money to survive on top of that you're happy as hell you're like oh shoot 
great. We're going up. It's 14 bucks an hour. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm going to be able to, you know, do a few things. It's not going to be as, as, as difficult on me. And then you find out that, well, on the back end, I'm going to have to pay for dental and I'm going to have to pay for some health benefits, which I had covered completely before. And I get no more breaks. Insane. So it's, uh, anyway, the people that are doing this actually um, are the children of Tim Hortons, the billionaire uh, co-founder. Uh, let me see who they are here. Uh, I lost their names here. Fair enough. They're gone. Okay. Uh, oh, no, here we go. <laughs> they're Ron, de- they're Ron, dead to me. Ron Joyce Jr. and Jerry Horton Joyce mm. uh, said that as of January 1st, so it's just passed, uh, they'll be no longer entitled to paid breaks and also cut costs uh, on all the dental and health benefits to offset this thing. Uh, I don't know. Big oh, bully? Man. Big bully? Unbelievable bully. I mean, uh, billion dollar company, uh, Tim Hortons is for sure, and uh, could obviously afford, I would imagine, this increase. And the increase is, it's a, it's a government increase, has to happen, um, and that's what's up. I mean, this is just like, they just said, listen, we're not having it, and what they're doing is legal. I mean, what they're doing is legal. See, that's another. See, that's like an, another like talk show, yeah. like just of questions you can ask. Like, how even is that like allowed yeah. to do that on yeah. a legal level where... Yeah, you have people working full time, and all of a sudden, oh, here's a pay increase. But as soon as you get that pay increase, we're going to cut your yeah. dental and medical. Shouldn't be legal. That right. should not be legal. The government should step in and do something about this. Um, and here's the thing: I think like the biggest thing with this whole minimum wage hike uh, issue, I think they should really look at the company's like overall value. And people should submit, like, especially like for smaller businesses or whatever. See if smaller businesses can afford paying more employees this right. this minimum wage hike, right. and then maybe meet in the middle, or just give like a slight raise or what have you. Right. And then, but when it comes to these billion dollar companies, come on. Yeah, I mean it's 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 not good, and it it, it sets a tone and example. And here's the thing, right? Tim Hortons is a Canadian company, right? right? Canadian company. Um, and you're and you're and and they're raising the they're obviously raising the hourly wage in a very expensive environment, which is Toronto, a very expensive place to live. They're raising it obviously to help the employees, the worker, the average worker, yeah, to afford a lifestyle in that city, right? And then you have the evil on the backside saying, "Oh, okay, you can have this, but let me take this away." You know what I see happening now? Yeah. Um, when I used to work for. Canada Post. I mean, you know what? I think a lot of jobs are like this, but I'll just yeah. talk about my experience. Uh, it was very hard to get full time, and the reason right. being, once right. you get full time, yeah. you're in, you're you're entitled to your benefits. Right. So, excuse me. Does that start a trend for these companies now to just only offer like part time? Well, I think that's that might that that could be a. Could have been a trend for a while, though. Right. I, mean, I think it's already there. Yeah. But it's, it's like now, now is it more so is the question. Are companies going to be more so willing to be like, you know what? We're not only are we cutting these benefits, yeah. but to save ourselves a little couple more dollars on the back end, yeah. uh, it's going to make it hard. We're going to try and make it a little bit harder to get full time. But it just sucks because those people that do work these jobs for years and years and years. Yeah. To build up that level to get full time, now yeah. you're now you're still getting screwed. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, and they're going to be forced to. I mean, if you're not going to have those benefits, that's kind of that's part of the benefit of working full time for a company like this is that you get those some advan- kind of compensation. You at get least. those advantages, right? You get the the dental, the medical. Um, it's not so much the wage because the wage is not outstandingly great. So yeah. what do they do? They're going to go and get now two part time jobs. So just go back part time on on Tim's and then get it somewhere else. And then when you do get another job, when you're balancing two or three jobs, yeah. you end up getting sometimes screwed on your taxes. So it's kind of like, how do you win in this situation? True. Yeah. True. I you mean, end up it, paying into taxes at this uh, point. It's tough for people working minimum wage jobs. It is super difficult to. Um, it's uh, even with the cost of living, of course. Even in Halifax, oh, Halifax yeah. cost of living is is up there. Yeah. Um, but in a city like Toronto, man, like holy crap! Like, it's no comparison to here, mm. and you know, to take away some of those those benefits on the back end is just, re- especially for a company like this, man. This is a multi billion dollar company. Like, I know it just it's kind of like, can you do the math? See what you would actually be like. What are they? I would love to know the number of what they would be actually losing comparatively. Like, if they're making let's right. say fifty six billion, like, oh well, next year we're only gonna make fifty. Five billion. Yeah, yeah. No, like no. really? Like, well, but the companies are like that. It's like I remember I was doing a, 
a corporate event for a mm -hmm, and uh, <laughs> th I remember every year they were going through their uh, their graphic chart and the trend was they wanted to beat sales of right. the previous year right, and I'm right. just like when is like you're gonna hit a ceiling we only have so much money when is enough enough right yeah uh, I think it's part of the the competitive nature because they're dealing with I know who you're talking about and there's a lot of com competition in that space yep. as there is in a lot of spaces but that one is v it's very very competitive so they're not only competing against themselves they're trying to compete against other institutions and I get it but at the same time it's like yeah when is enough enough you know it would be crazy for an institution to do at mm. this this juncture yep. if they someone came out and said oh yeah by the way full benefits right if, if let's say like Starbucks or something like another right, right. competing yeah uh, this would be the time it, you, if you did that like you people would be like yep this would be the time. This right would be now. the time to do stuff like that because there's certain companies down in the states where they allow their there's I can't remember the name of this this one I'm thinking of but this guy uh, running a pretty successful company, mm. uh, technology company, and after like three or four years he was like, why am I making a million dollars said per year as right. opposed to uh, another person in my company making fifty six thousand dollars a year? So right. I'm right. making he he put down his. The highest paid employee, like they're all getting paid the same now. Okay. At this guy's company. And not only that, they gave them shares within the company. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's cool. Right? It just, it, yeah. one, it, it, it's, it makes more sense that way. If your Absolutely. company is profitable, yep. if every year we're making millions, yep. I'm perfectly fine. Yeah. And I, I just think it's unfortunate. The, I think it just boils down to greed. It does, and I mean, if you do the share thing, it's a vested interest in the company. You have a happier employee, I think. You have a way happier employee, because someone who's going like to come to part of it, right? Come to work, it's like they feel like, yeah, yeah. they are part of the, the the company instead yeah. of just a, an employee. Yeah, like, no doubt. No, I agree with that. I think it's a good move. More companies should definitely do that. Oh man, if I had a like a little three four million dollar company, I would be like, we're yeah. all getting paid the same. You can buy in shares. Yep. And I know a handful of companies that do that here locally, but um, yeah, it's a good idea. I think more companies should adopt that uh, that mantra. No doubt. Uh, the spokesperson from Tim Hortons is declining to make a comment. Uh, they said that they're responsible for all handling all their employee matters at the restaurants uh, within the laws and regulations. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's a sad thing. But yeah, more companies should step up and maybe um, be different. I don't know if I'm going to. I'm going to have to boycott Tim Hortons for a little bit, I think. Yeah, I don't. I don't usually go to Tim Hortons anyway. Either way, I'm not that like I'm not like the coffee guy. But I don't know. I yeah. mean, they're not going to notice me not go. Like I'm never there. Like again, I'm not a regular, so they're yeah. not going to notice me buy little two dollars every like three weeks. Yeah, but you know what? This this is a national story. Yeah, and uh, it doesn't affect only um, you know the customer going there. Yeah, but other corporations or investors. No, oh, exactly. Getting involved with a company like yeah. this and they don't want that bad. It's like it's like a sponsor getting involved with a show or or an athlete or somebody who's done, you know, things that they're not approving of. Yeah. This is a similar situation. There are people that are not going to want to get involved with Tim Hortons because of these situations. This is this true. situation. So yeah. it could have some big repercussions though. Yeah. So but hopefully, uh, hopefully for the better. Yes. So let's hope so. Yeah. Without further ado, uh, to do. I think this is the end of the show. Ooh, yeah. What's your plans this evening besides trying to pray you have power for? <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to be good for this evening. Um, yeah. This evening, I'm again what I do every evening after the show. Where I are you going to be? <laughs> I upload all these episodes to yeah. the rightful platforms that they should be on. So that takes me like an hour or two after the show, and then later this evening, since it's Thursday, I will be at vinyl spinning those tunes with local DJ DJ. Oh, local yeah. friend, local That's friend and DJ. Good times, yeah. Good to times. be had by all. I believe it's free cover. It's always free cover down there. So if you're looking for something to do, hopefully they have power later on this this evening. Yeah, but, let's uh, hope so. Yeah, That's uh, what I'll be saying and yourself, sir. Uh, I'm going to go and lay low. I got some work to do myself, so yeah. I'll go back and do that. Um, but yeah, I'll just try to pray that I don't lose power as well. Nice, you know what I mean. And you got an event Saturday. Yeah. Yes. Got the jam. The we'll, jam. We'll talk about that a little later, probably I just, tomorrow. I remember it, but I might have to make a sneak peek on that little Dude. jammy jam. Dude. It might be a, a sober jam for me, so it probably will be a sober jam. We'll have to pull the sober jam. Move. Sober jam. Yeah. All right. Sober jam. Sober jam. Thank you, everybody, for joining us, and uh, hopefully most of you have power out there. And uh, be safe tonight. If you don't have to go out, do not go out. Nope.
probably a good idea. Get some bananas. Go to Pete's for Deke <laughs> if you need to. Yep. Uh, also, quick reminder, all the buses have stopped, apparently. Someone posted up on Facebook that the buses have now, um, oh God. it's over. Wow. So if you need to take a bus somewhere, it's not going to happen tonight. Hmm. Uh, but be safe out there. Thank you for joining us. So once again, we'll be back Thank you very tomorrow much, everybody. again at the same time, 4.30 to 5-ish. Yep. For some uh, more talking trends and juiciest, the, the topics of the juiciest nature. Right. We'll end this uh, week off with a bang. Yeah, and tomorrow is Sexy Friday. Right. We'll try to find some sexy topics for you. <laughs> there you Although go. Although today the naked one was pretty sexy. Yeah, I should have saved that for tomorrow. All right. Peace out. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. Thank you, guys. Take care.